uh, there has been a few other cases, uh, Jati versus, uh, I believe, uh, Adobe, Jetty versus uh, mm -hmm. Shuttercock, and so there's a lot of um, uh, versions and theories of copyright infringement when it comes to AI uh, using uh, copyright images and articles. Mm -hmm. and so what are some of the, um, I guess, uh, lessons we can learn? Because there's over the last 12 months, there's so many sort of uh, 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 arguments about you know, fair use versus uh, uh, scraping mm. data and making copies uh, right. for, for training, right? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say that uh, the, the, the litigation cases are still ongoing, so there, there might be more cases uh, that, that, have, that have been filed trying to test the boundaries of fair use. I don't see any clarity on, um, on, that, on, on those uh, principles just yet. Uh, the, the, there are more cases for sure, more cases have commenced, right? But none of them have actually reached trial. Uh, some of those cases that uh, we, we looked at last year, uh, they've reached a stage, uh, what, we, uh, what we call a dismissal of claim stage, where uh, some of the claims that are weaker, uh, some, of, uh, some of the US district judges have said that some of these claims, they are so weak, I will dismiss them so that you can concentrate on the core issues. So the core, the core issues around uh, fair use, those are still making their way slowly towards trial. But one of the things that has uh, come out uh, in, in the last year, which is very interesting, uh, are some cases coming out of uh, China. And uh, these are cases around the, the question, uh, when, you have, uh, when you use AI to generate uh, new content, new images, right? Uh, when are they infringing? And when uh, are you able to say that you, it it is uh, you actually have copyright in those, and uh, you can you can contrast them to some of the cases coming out of the U.S. the U.S. Copyright Office, where they have said that uh, uh, if you are using uh, 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 generative AI to generate images, and all you are do doing is to pro provide prompts, uh, there have been a number of cases where they say that uh, that kind of uh, copyright uh, content cannot be registered by the Copyright Office. So two very contrasting approaches. Let me, let me explain um, uh, them in a little bit more detail. So in the, in the, 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 from what I gather, the, the US Copyright Office approach has, uh, treats the uh, language model, the generative AI, as though it is an agent. And your prompts uh, is, uh, uh, are instructions you're giving an independent agent, so which means that your prompts will not be sufficient uh, to get, get you Right, um, the person who gave those instructions copyrights because the agent is the one that has copyrights, and since the agent uh, isn't the person, right, uh, you can't, uh, they can't have copyright. So that's uh, that's uh, uh, been the position of, of the U.S. Copyright Office in a couple of cases. Contrast with China, where uh, the Chinese courts uh, again in a number of cases, right, uh, have essentially uh, listened. Um, to the claimant, and uh, the claimant was able to demonstrate the prompts that he gave um, to the generative AI um, uh, solution, and he was able to show successively how the image was transformed with each successive prompts, such that he was able to uh, then demonstrate that the prompts were uh, in accumulation, sufficient creativity and originality, mm -hmm. so that the output of the uh, model was copyrightable, and the person who provided the prompt can gain copyright. And, and, the, uh, and the Chinese courts um, have actually uh, upheld um, a, a copyright in, an, uh, in a couple of these um, uh, cases. So yes, I, I, think, I think that uh, uh, we, we, we have come, um, come a long way since our conversation last year. What I, I, I hear a lot uh, in, in the exhibition hall when we're talking to people is that uh, uh, they are interested to embrace um, AI mm. and to find the right tools to help them be better lawyers. And one of the things that uh, I, uh, I, I've been sh uh, sharing with people uh, when they ask me whether uh, AI will take away the jobs of lawyers uh, is that uh, AI will not take away the job of a lawyer, but a lawyer who knows AI will take away your job. Oh yes, yeah, that's right. And, yes. and that's really the emphasis uh, this year. One of the things that SAL did is to uh, work um, with um, our community of volunteers and also with uh, Microsoft, right, uh, to develop a prompt engineering guide. So uh, uh, generative AI tools are on the desktop of all lawyers uh, in the form of uh, co-pilots 
which is integrated with Microsoft 365. You can access uh, Claude, you can access OpenAI, uh, ChatGPT, you can access Gemini. So these are general purpose, chat-based generative AI tools. So uh, our prompt engineering guide is intended to teach lawyers how to use them in the right way and use them effectively to help with legal tasks so that they will be the lawyer who knows AI yes. uh, and will not be threatened by AI. So we, when we talk about some of these tools to help lawyers, right, um, there's an essential element of, uh, I guess, uh, accountability, human in the loop, right? And there's always a, a, a bit of a trade-off, a tricky trade-off between productivity gains versus safety. Um, and it's always uh, quite difficult to actually mm, determine the kind of thresholds and decision trees, you know, to be built to incorporate this human in the loop um, uh, process. So what... What have you seen so far? There are some of the challenges. Well, I would say that uh, in the context of um, using AI uh, in, uh, in, the legal, uh, in the legal space, or by lawyers when they are uh, uh, providing legal advice mm -hmm. and professional legal services, uh, our stance is definitely human in the loop. Um, we, 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 we do, we, uh, I have two examples of how uh, we take this principle and we apply it in our practice. So for example, our prompt engineering guide, mm. right? Uh, it is a repeated exhortation in the guide to say that uh, uh, always remember the professional responsibility a lawyer has to his clients. Always make sure that you use uh, the, the tool to help you, help you with tasks always apply your domain expertise, your mm -hmm. specialist knowledge to the outputs, check, verify, mm -hmm. integrate the outputs into your final work product. You are responsible in, for your mm -hmm. final work product. Definitely human in the loop, right? Uh, the other example that I can raise is um, another, uh, another way we put this in practice. Uh, we just launched uh, LawNet AI, uh, which is an AI tool uh, that uh, is integrated with our LawNet legal research portal. And we have uh, used, uh, a, uh, we have implemented a, the ability to, uh, to use generative AI to create summaries of cases. Mm -hmm. Now, creating summaries of cases is a very um, established and very stable use case for generative AI. So we, we spent, yes, half the time uh, uh, training and fine-tuning our model using our law reports, but the other half the time, uh, we built trust and safety features. Uh, things like highlighting probable hallucinations, mm -hmm. highlighting sections in the summary, uh, which is of low confidence because the same thing um, isn't really quite found in the source uh, judgment, and then also highlighting uh, each paragraph of the summary to the source paragraph in the judgment. Now, these are tools meant to assist the, mm. the human reader. So again, definitely human in the loop. In fact, tools to help the human perform his work well when he is in the loop. Right. Uh, basically, we can outsource uh, some of the tasks, but not the responsibility or the accountability, right? Yes, yes. yes. The, the tool helps us with um, some of the tasks, mm. right? It can make it a little bit simpler, but we're ultimately responsible as professionals.